This section is focusing on infinite limits. In the last section, we focused on finite limits. We focused on as x was approaching a specific number. Here, we're going to look at infinite limits, meaning as x is approaching either positive infinity or x is approaching negative infinity. What this is going to help us with is this is going to help us determine the long-term behavior, long-term behavior of a function, which is really going to help us with applied examples, and long-term behavior of a graph. So if we focus on the positive infinity, Function-wise, that means what happens as our x values get larger and larger, meaning increase indefinitely, or graphing-wise, what's happening on the very right-hand side of the graph. If we focus on x is approaching negative infinity, of course, that means our x values get smaller and smaller, or if we're going to look at it on a graph, what's happening on the very left-hand side of our graph. The first thing that we're going to focus on is graphs. Most students are visual learners, so let's start by trying to figure these out visually. So I have two visuals here, and hopefully once we get through with these visuals, it will make sense as to what we're actually trying to do when we're trying to find infinite limits. Hopefully that helps us with it when we get to actual function notation. So I have two different visuals here, and we want to figure out, of course, the limit as x is approaching positive infinity and x is approaching negative infinity. So let's start with my left visual here. We have to do it separately because most of the time they're going to be separate answers. We're going to first look at the limit as x is approaching positive infinity of this graph right here. And let's just call this graph f of x. So of f of x, meaning x getting larger and larger and larger, meaning what's happening on the very right-hand side of my graph. That is as x is approaching infinity. So if I look farther and farther out to the right-hand side of my graph, Notice my graph gets lower and lower and lower. So it's going to decrease indefinitely. Since it's getting lower and lower, that means my answer is going to be negative infinity. So what happens here is students get this infinity and this infinity mixed up. Does it mean top, bottom, left, right, so on and so forth? So as x is approaching positive infinity, that means we're looking at the very right-hand side of the graph. And since our graph is decreasing indefinitely, that means our answer is negative infinity because it is going down on the right-hand side of the graph. Okay, let's look at the other one, the limit as x is approaching negative infinity of this function. So again, negative infinity means what's happening on the left side of this graph as we keep going farther and farther out. X is approaching negative infinity, okay? So again, this means the very left-hand side of the graph. And if we look at our graph, it's going up and up and up forever. So since it's getting larger in that aspect, our answer is positive infinity because it is going up on that part of the graph. So we're looking at the right and the left-hand part of the graph, and then we're seeing what our graph is doing. Now our answers can be positive and negative infinity like we see in this example, but they actually can be numbers. And let's do that by looking at the next example. So same thing, the limit as x is approaching positive infinity of my function, let's call this guy g of x. And eventually the limit as x is approaching negative infinity of my function, g of x. So the first one, x is approaching positive infinity, means I want to look at the very right-hand side of my graph. I'm going farther and farther and farther out here. If I look at the right-hand side of my graph, notice, my graph ends up right here. And we know that there's a horizontal asymptote there, so we know that my graph has to get closer and closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. So it's going to plateau at that point. That point is right here, which my y value is positive 2. So it's going to plateau at positive 2. 
Moving on to the next, x is going to negative infinity, meaning what's happening on the very left-hand side of my graph. So I go to my very left-hand side of my graph, and I trace it farther and farther and farther out. Notice again, it's going to approach my horizontal asymptote there. It's going to plateau at my graph there. And again, that y value is positive 2. So my limit as x is approaching negative infinity is also going to be positive 2. So if there's a horizontal asymptote, your graph is going to plateau at that, both on the right hand and on the left hand side of the graph. So looking at these visuals here, we see that infinite limits mean what's happening on the very extremes on the graph, right and left. And we see anything can happen. It can go up forever, down forever, or it can approach a specific y value the farther out that we get. Let's look at a couple more visuals to help us set this in for sure. So I have two here. Let's start at the left-hand one. Again, I want the limit as x is approaching positive infinity of my function. Let's call this guy h. And the limit as x is approaching negative infinity of my h of x. So one more time, x is approaching positive infinity. I'm looking at the very right-hand side of my graph. So the farther out I get on the right-hand side of my graph, Notice my graph is going up and up and up forever there. So it's going to increase indefinitely on this side. So my answer here is positive infinity. And positive infinity because it's going up on that part of the graph. As x is approaching negative infinity, the very left-hand side of my graph, if I trace it, the farther and farther and farther out I get, notice it decreases indefinitely. So my answer here is negative infinity because it is going down on that part of the graph. So if we have an oblique asymptote, our answer is going to be positive or negative infinity because it's going to follow that slanted asymptote. All right, let's look at my last visual that I have here. This guy is called f of x, so we want to do the limit as x is approaching infinity of f of x. And I can only do this one here, x is approaching positive infinity, or the right-hand side of my graph, because it didn't give me what's happening on the left-hand side of my graph. So focusing on this graph here, this graph does what we call oscillates. It goes back and forth, okay? So notice it's high here, then low, then high, then low, then high, then low. But the farther out it gets, the oscillating gets minimized. So notice we have a really extreme oscillation here, and the farther out it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So what's happening as the farther and farther out we get, meaning x is approaching positive infinity? Now it's still going to bounce up and down all the way out, but that up and down is going to be so small that eventually we won't be able to see it. And so it's bouncing up and down around what y value, and that's what we're trying to figure out here, what y value. Well, this graph tries to help us out with this yellow region that it has shaded there. It bounces around this y value here of 4. So the farther out we get, the closer and closer it's going to get to 4. So that's why my limit at positive infinity is going to be 4. So we can see again what we're trying to do at infinite limits is look at what's happening on the very right-hand side and the very left-hand side of the graph. I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, we're actually going to be looking at functions and figuring out how do we come up with the limits at infinity and negative infinity if we don't have the visuals to go along with them like we've seen so far.